Bible words and verses, what the Bible says. The Sign of Jonah Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. To understand three days and three nights, there are three keys, God's clock, the Passover, and two Sabbaths. God's clock. Each 24-hour day starts at sunset or evening. And understanding the basics of the feast of the Passover and the fact that between the burial and the resurrection there were two Sabbaths, a feast Sabbath and a weekly Sabbath. Let's first see how God counts time. Three evenings and three mornings is three 24-hour days. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Three full nights and three full days. Three days and three nights is 72 hours. Christ was buried on a Wednesday evening and rose from the dead on a Saturday evening. What about a Friday evening burial and a Sunday morning resurrection? That's 36 hours or one and a half days, but 72 hours is three 24-hour days. A Friday evening burial and a Sunday morning resurrection would be 36 hours or one and a half days, or in other words, two nights and one day. Christ was buried on a Wednesday evening and rose from the dead on a Saturday evening. That's 72 hours or three full days, or in other words, three days and three nights. 72 hours is three days and three nights. A full day has 24 hours. 12 hours of darkness and 12 hours of daylight. Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. 
But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. God's reckoning of a 24-hour day, 12 hours of evening, darkness or night, starting at sunset, followed by 12 hours of morning, light or day or daylight, starting at sunrise. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. God created a seven-day week, starting with the first day, Sunday, and ending with the seventh day, Saturday, or the Sabbath. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Buried on a Wednesday evening and rose on a Saturday evening is correct, but to be even more precise and remembering God's reckoning of time, where a day starts in the evening at sunset. Christ was buried just before sunset as Wednesday Abib 14 was about to end and Thursday Abib 15 was about to begin. And likewise, Christ rose just before sunset as Saturday Abib 17 was about to end and Sunday Abib 18 was about to begin. Three days and three nights. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and be raised again the third day. Once again, there are three keys to understanding the events leading up to the burial and the resurrection. One, God's clock, evening first and morning second. Two, being familiar with the feast of the Passover. And three, recognizing that between the burial and the resurrection there were two Sabbaths, Thursday, Abib 15, and Saturday, Abib 17. The Passover Instituted It's necessary to be familiar with the Passover feast in order to understand the events related to the crucifixion. The Feast of Unleavened Bread shalt thou keep. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread as I commanded thee in the time of the month Abib. For in the month Abib thou camest out from Egypt. Abib became Nisan at the time of the Babylonian captivity. In the first month, that is, the month Nisan, in the twelfth year of King Ahasuerus, they cast Pur, that is, the lot, before Haman, from day to day, and from month to month, to the twelfth month, that is, the month Adar. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you 
the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at even, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. In the first month, in the fourteenth day of the month, ye shall have the Passover, a feast of seven days. Unleavened bread shall be eaten. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. During Crucifixion Week, even though the Passover was the first day of unleavened bread, Wednesday Abib 14, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread was Thursday Abib 15, the Feast Sabbath or the High Sabbath. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work therein. The seventh day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread was Wednesday Abib 21, also a feast Sabbath. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days, and the seventh day is an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Christ is the Lamb of God. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Christ is the Lamb without blemish. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Christ is our Passover. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Christ is the Messiah. The Samaritan woman at Jacob's well. But the hour cometh, and now is, 
when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Mark 16 verse 9 what does this verse truly mean? Mark 16 verse 9 Let's discern this verse based on grammar and context. Now when Jesus was risen, early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Mark 16 verse 9 Did Christ rise early in the morning on Sunday or did Christ appear to Mary Magdalene early in the morning on Sunday after he had been risen since Saturday evening? John 20 verse 1 We know from John 20 verse 1 that Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene early on Sunday morning. Mark 16 verse 9 Now when Jesus was risen, early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Mark 16 verse 9 From the sign of Jonah, three days and three nights, and knowing that God cannot lie, we know that Christ rose from the dead on Saturday evening and continued to be in this risen state when early on Sunday morning he appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Now when Jesus was risen, early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Christ appeared to Mary Magdalene and the two on the road to Emmaus, both times after he was risen. In other words, he was risen in a risen state, both at the time that he first appeared to Mary Magdalene on Sunday morning and when he appeared to the two on the road to Emmaus, towards late afternoon on Sunday. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. In other words, both appearances were after Christ was risen, in a risen state, not at the moment when he rose. Christ was risen in a risen state when he appeared a third time to his apostles. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that he was risen from the dead. was risen. We can further illustrate with is risen that this means a state of being. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. 
he is risen means that risen is his state of being almost like saying he has risen it's an action that started prior to now and continues to be a true state of being as clearly illustrated in the following verse Romans 8 verse 34 who is he that condemneth it is Christ that died yea rather that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God who also maketh intercession for us in another example Cleopas speaks and mentions that Christ appeared to Cleopas and Simon the two on the road to Emmaus this Simon is not Simon Peter or Cephas this Simon is Cleopas companion remember that Cleopas and Simon made their way to the eleven apostles in the same hour that Jesus vanished saying the Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon the resurrection our Lord Jesus Christ rose on Saturday evening of Nisan Abib 17 here's an amazing fact remembering that Nisan Abib is the seventh month of the civil year and that Nisan Abib became the first month of the sacred year in other words the seventh month of the civil calendar became the first month of the sacred calendar or feast calendar and according to the various scripture accounts and context Jesus Christ rose from the dead on Saturday Abib 17 and God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained and the waters returned from off the earth continually and after the end of the hundred and fifty days the waters were abated here it is and the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat and the waters decreased continually until the tenth month in the tenth month on the first day of the month were the tops of the mountains seen in other words the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat and Christ rose from the dead in the first month on the seventeenth day of the month remembering that the seventh month later became the first month in other words Christ rose in the same month and day that the ark rested beyond coincidence Christ rose toward the end of Saturday just before sunset and he did not wait till morning for the angel Gabriel to open the tombstone as Christ is able to translate himself through matter as he showed on Sunday at his first appearance to the Apostles and a week later at his second appearance to the Apostles 
Question. If Christ rose on Saturday evening, what was he doing at the sepulcher on Sunday morning? Answer. Christ is the first fruits. In other words, Christ is the first fruits of the harvest. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow, after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. The morrow after the Sabbath means the next day, which is Sunday. What priest? Christ is the high priest. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So also, Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. But Christ, being come, an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Christ is the first fruits. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Christ is the first fruits of the harvest, also known as the end of the world or the second coming. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Question. What is the purpose of the crucifixion of Christ? Answer. Christ died on the cross so that his elect, the children of God, have eternal life and fellowship with God. But Christ, being come an high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer 
sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who, through the eternal Spirit, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Here's the mystery of godliness. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come.